As they say, the first one through the wall is the one that gets bloodied. And and uh, when you step out of, of line, you're the one that is going to take the, the arrows, as they say. Um, and But if you're able to survive that, being these brave scientists who are coming out, yeah. it, it it does give an example to so many others that you're like, oh, if, if he or she did it, maybe I can start talking about it. And I think the world is in a place now, in an yeah. awakened place, that it accepts these conversations so much more than it did before. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the the anomaly that is quantum physics. It annoys the the Newtonians so much. Uh, it annoys the materialists so much. Uh, and what it's the the connections between spirituality, between ancient texts that are started science seems to be catching up to what they've been talking about for thousands of years. What is your feeling on that, how that is coming up? Our conversation is a spiritual, scientific, quantum physics conversation as we continue to go. Um, these conversations were unheard of 10 years ago, 15 years ago. They were. And um, maybe the easiest way of responding to that um, is to go back to before the, you know, the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Because up to that point, the world who was was Newtonian. But I have to say, you know, giving Isaac Newton a break, he's now often recognised as being the last of the alchemists rather than just the first, just the first, or one of the first of the natural philosophers or scientists. And he and others, um, I would say especially Francis Bacon, who also gets a really bad rap sometimes as the father of the scientific method, I think for both of them, they were very spiritual people. And I think for both of them, they were rather trying to move beyond the superstition of their era and authority of a church that really was, was preventing any rational investigation mm -hmm. of the deeper nature of reality. And, and them and Copernicus, Galileo, all the oh. folks who were yeah. the pioneers of that time were incredibly brave because it wasn't just that you might be sort of... Um, disparaged by your peers mm -hmm. you might get burned at the stake absolutely uh, you know this is serious <laughs> stuff this is serious stuff the so, galileo effect the galileo effect is literally a term absolutely so but the the point is that the more therefore that exploration of the physical world continued you know the view of of the the church authorities was okay you can investigate this but you're not investigating anything beyond this so this sort of schism gradually took place between science and spirituality. And that continued until by the 19th century, we had an incredible mechanistic worldview of materialism and separation. And that became not just the scientific worldview, as we, we both know, it became the societal perspective. You know, with, with the Industrial Revolution, um, organizations, companies, corporations, governments, all of it, all of it, education, healthcare, were all based on this worldview. And so, you know, by the 20th century, when the quantum pioneers and Einstein were discovering what were phenomena that were incredibly anomalous to that mechanistic viewpoint, that were really giving us clues to this deeper nature of reality, that was pushed to the side. And even Einstein was uncomfortable with quantum physics, as I'm sure you know, he called it spooky action at a distance, and we can come back to that. <laughs> but the reality was what they were unveiling, what were they revealing, were giving us clues that have literally lasted and hung around philosophically for the last century. But now we're discovering more and more and more such anomalous phenomena and perspectives that the old pre-quantum, pre-relativity, mechanistic worldview of separation and materiality just can't hold anymore because the evidence is so compelling that it now, you know, those clues from 100 years ago are now coming front and centre because what they're doing is instead of them just being clues that mind and consciousness are primary to reality, 
the evidence we're seeing at all scales of existence and numerous fields of research is bringing that front and center into an unavoidable perspective. And that's what I'd love us to explore because this is so exciting because it, we now get the evidence for it, you know? To watch the full video, click on the link below and don't forget to subscribe.